This is the video review for Transformers Movie Premium Barricade. Um, as you can see, he's the Mustang police car. Um, black and white. Um, he is the premium version, so he has a few more paint applications than the original. As you can see, the windows are now frosted, which, you know, I, I'm kind of iffy on. I don't really, don't love them, don't hate them. They're just kind of there. Um, but there's a lot more, uh, you can see a lot more of his labels and uh, detail work on the premium version. Uh, makes him look just a lot better in vehicle mode. I mean, he was pretty cool before. He was one of my favorite movie deluxe figures. Um, and, and this just really helps. Um, the police now here in the white is now silver instead of just um, just empty black in the middle of the white. And it's nice shiny silver and same on the back here. It's a silver paint. Um, and there is a modification out there that lets you replace this light bar with a working LED version of a light bar. So they you know blink back and forth like a real cop car would. Um, and it fits just inside the hood. I haven't done that yet. Um, if I, I, It's something I'm considering doing, and if I do, I'll make sure to do a quick little update video showing off how it works. Transformation, you want to start off by uh, just pulling the whole side of the car up and out, like that. And same over here. Up and out. Let's see how that works. I'm going to come under here, pull this piece. Um, legs, flip those down, grab this lower waist piece here and pull it out and flip it all the way down and around and there's a couple slots here on the bottom you just plug it into to form the chest. I'll even grab the legs here at the right behind the knee and straighten them down. Now you can flip these little foot spikes up whenever you'd like. Um, separate the legs and then the feet actually will click into place when you get it all the way back, it gives them a little bit more stability. And then you want to grab the hips and pull them out and up right here. There we go. Now you want to pull the arms down. And then I usually take these top pieces and spin them around. It frees, it gives them a little bit more freedom of movement. Um, let you pose them a little bit more how you'd like. Um, and I think it looks a little bit more movie accurate to have the spikes pointing backwards, and um, and the wheels kind of on the inside of the armor, or mechanical bits. Um, bend his elbows forward right here, um, and then flip up the thumb, and flip up the hand piece. The little fender splits into three pieces. You got the thumb up here. You got three fingers right here all together, and then just this lower cable piece. Um, same over here. I mean, you still got a car bumper down there, but it does make it look a little bit more like like a hand to do it this way than to have it all as, all as one solid piece, which is kind of nice. It's not something they had to do, but they did work that in there. Um, the back part flips down. The windows flip up. Kind of form little wings on the backpack there. You split the hood open, and then you want to pop his head out here and pull it all the way up. And then you can close these as much as you'd like. You can leave them wide open. I've seen people who display them with these wide open. You can push them in just about that far. I mean, if you manage to lift up on this neck piece just a little bit, you can actually slide the panels underneath his head there all the way up against his head. And that's the way I like to do it. I think it just makes the to torso look a little bit more solid and, and makes him look more like a whole robot than with the big gap there if you left it open. Um, and there you have him in R Deluxe Barricade in robot mode. Um, posability, like I said, you can position these however you'd like. They're on ball joints. Um, he's got ball joint shoulders that are a little limited just based on how the ball joint hooks in there, but, um, but you get a good range of motion on the arms. Um, he's got the elbows, uh, just hinge elbows, and again the hinge fingers up here that you can position how you'd like. Um, he's got ball joint hips, um, he's got double ratcheting knees, so you can get some posability out of those, and he does have ball joints here on the feet. Um, a little limited, and I think they work best locked into place, but uh, you, you can't, you'd have a little bit of range of motion there with the feet. Um, his, his head doesn't turn at all, it's pretty much locked in place just due to how it transforms, but still pretty nice, and you can see he's got a much more detailed face uh, on the premium version versus the original. 
Um, his little gimmick here is that uh, there's a little switch here on his arm that when you push, um, it's you see his arm extends kind of in a, in a punch. And you fold it down like that. And again, you push this button right here. His arm. It's kind of a lame gimmick. It's it's not my it's not the best thing in the world, but there you go. It's it's hard to activate the trigger without in some way blocking the uh, the arm, and it's just it's kind of lame. Um, on my first one, I just glued that in place and didn't bother with it again, and I didn't miss it. Um, so you know your your mileage will vary. If you like it, great. Um, I didn't. Um, and his other little gimmick is that if you open up his chest he ejects a little the whole front of his grill comes out and unfolds into a little little version of frenzy and again it's not a superposable version of frenzy he's got hinge arms uh... hinge legs and a hinge head um, and most of those are, are simply transformation joints maybe the arms uh, didn't need to have hinges for to make them transformable, but I wanted to have him have a little posability, and I, and I guess that worked. Um, and again, he's not. It's neat that they put the gimmick there, but I mean, he's not any great shakes. I usually just leave him inside of uh, barricade here, just because it. You know, even though you can flip this bumper back up, it just makes his chest look hollow and empty without having him in there. And I wasn't a big enough fan of Frenzy to have him have him out. Um, just a basic size comparison here. I did bring uh, Bumblebee. This is not the premium version. I, I do have the premium version, but uh, this is not him. But just a he's average deluxe size for a movie figure. Most of them ran about about that tall. Um, but there he is with his what I consider to be his arch nemesis. I think uh, Bumblebee and Barricade definitely could be arch enemies. And again, I'm basing that on one fight in the first movie. But when Bumblebee went one on one with somebody, it was um, it was barricade. So that's the only thing I base that on. But overall, a very nice Deluxe. Um, if you're not into the movie figures, this isn't going to change your mind. But um, a very solidly constructed Deluxe. Um, a very nice representation of what we got on screen for the size and the price. Um, probably not worth... I mean, like I, I picked him up for 7 bucks on sale. Uh, and I think he's worth that. I think, I think he's worth the full $10 price. Uh, maybe not so much now that we're going to be getting uh, Transformers 2 movie figures within a few months. Um, and maybe demand for him will die down. Maybe it'll go up. I don't know what, if any, role or mention he'll get in the sequel. But as of right now, all I can say is he's a great figure. And if you're looking to increase, you know, pick up a figure and you see him and you don't have him, he's, he's worth picking up. He's a nice little figure. Uh, Transformers movie, premium barricade.